Welcome to another episode of The Wheel Estate Show. We're your hosts, Ryan Kelly. And Eric Shaver. And today we have an episode for you about one of our favorite RV related topics consignments uh it's a good it's a good way to not have to do all the work yeah. and to let us do the work you collect the check and that's that's it you you know you you just know you have peace of mind that it's getting taken care of one less thing you have to worry about it's not on your plate to mm-hmm. take all those calls and yeah i, I mean it, it is very time consuming that's why it's a full-time job for us most of you who are, well you're either working and you don't have the time to have a part-time job trying to sell your rv or you're busy. A lot of people in retirement, it seems like they're busier in retirement than when they were working because you're volunteering, <laughs> yeah. you're doing stuff with the family, the kids. going on trips, you got all this stuff going on. So to service those phone calls, to service, you know, like yeah, questions and getting photos and getting, you know, information sent to customers, very time consuming. So mm-hmm. if you don't want to do that at consignment, you know, it's a great option. Welcome to the Wheel Estate Show, brought to you by the Top 50 Dealer Beaver Coach Sales with your hosts, Ryan Kelly and Eric Shaver. If you're here to learn about all things RV, you're in the right place. In this podcast, we sit down with people who build, buy, and sell RVs to bring you an in-depth look at the RV lifestyle. If you are brand new to the show, thank you so much for listening and for joining us. Uh, We are the authorities in the industry about RVs at this dealership before work starts on this podcast in this RV at this moment. And we stand behind that. We guarantee it. We like to interview people who are in this industry, whether it's reps, customers, uh, other coworkers here at at the store and sales or service. And we want to bring that information to you. There's a big, big umbrella of everything under the umbrella of the RV industry. There's a lot out there. It's overwhelming at times. So we thought, let's get together and make a podcast to help you out when you're on your travels, going on your adventures, and questions might pop up along the way. Like, for instance, we love our RV, it's been great, but we're ready to sell it, and we don't know how to sell it on our own. Not like conceptually, of course you understand the transaction. Determine a value, sell it, collect the profit, pay off the trade. Anyway, but, what we can do is help you in that process. So today we're going to talk about consignments, what that looks like. If you have an RV right now and you want to sell it, but you don't know how to start, what that process looks like, listen to this episode. You're going to enjoy it. Eric, why don't you start us off with some framework here? What is a consignment in the RV industry. What's that look like? So a consignment is very simple. We bring in your coach, we do the hard work and the legwork, and we sell it for you. So basically what happens is we make an agreement that for 90 days that coach is in our inventory. And what we do from there is we treat it as though it's our own inventory. So we clean it up, we, we market it, we put it on different websites to sell, and we bring in customers. We take trade-ins on it as though it's our own inventory. We get uh, financing on it as though it's our own inventory. So it becomes part of, part of our dealership's inventory for that specified amount of time. Nice thing is you don't have to deal with phone calls in the middle of the night when people have questions on stuff or they can't get the slides out or they forgot this or that. Um, You don't have to deal with showing the coach, keeping the coach clean, any of the hard work. And oh my gosh, how many times too, you know, have have people come in, oh, I need to, I want you to take my 1982 Winnebago on trade. And you don't want to do that. You're not going to, you're not going to have a use for that. We can, we can find a home for that thing. If you have a 82 Winnebago, call Ryan. We want it. Call me. Yep. Take that in on a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. For cash or... Gambler 500. <laughs> equal cash value. <laughs> so, and then at the end of it, we when we do sell it, there's a simultaneous transaction. Simultaneous. Sim- it is simultaneous. It happens at the same time, <laughs> identically speaking, where the customer... It's the mask. Where the customer... <laughs> the words get Essentially, we that. buy the RV from you. Yeah. And then the new customer buys it from us, and it happens like that. Siamese Tanius. Siamese Tanius. <laughs> uh, let's break it down now. We just gave the over thousand, you know, ninety thousand foot view here. Let's break it down. Okay. It was not quite a thousand foot view. It was more like a ninety thousand foot view. Uh, the first thing that you mentioned was we detail it inside and out. If you are looking to sell your RV, we understand that you've either been living in it full time, living in it part time, you've been using it. Now it's time to bring it in. Just get all of your stuff out of it and we'll go through and detail it inside and out. So we have a really good detail department, probably the best we've ever had Mm -hmm. at the store. Uh, There's a lot of places that just 
you know, kind of wipe it down and send it through. Our guys are just meticulous. They really, really take their time, uh, especially with these these outsides with these you know thirty, forty thousand dollar paint jobs with mm-hmm. three, four, five layers of clear coat. You 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 don't want people you know scratching it up. So mm-hmm. our our detail department's really good at that. But we get into the bays, we get into all the back of the cabinets, we get into all the drawers, vacuum everything out. It, th- there's a lot of effort that goes into detailing and cleaning a RV that maybe you don't want to do and if you want to sell your RV. So that's another great reason to bring it to a dealership. True. Um, before any of that happens, the biggest part of a consignment is agreeing on figures and the paperwork side of things. Is figuring out, you know, because this is a question I get asked a lot. There's a lot of ways dealers will, will structure a consignment. Mm where they'll do a percentage or they'll do a, a net figure, different things like that. <clears throat> we found the best way in our, in our opinion, um, that we, we've, we've done it several different ways in the past, but the best way we seem to, that we seem to have is to find a figure that we can net the customer after the sale of the coach. So, um, if that coach, it, let's use hundred thousand dollars. So if it's a, if it's a diesel pusher, we, we come to a figure of a hundred thousand dollars. Once we're agreed upon that number, we signed a contract for $100,000, meaning at the end of that sale, you're gonna get $100,000 once we sell it. Obviously, as a business, we need to make a profit, so we mark it up, and we'll mark it up whatever you know we determine the market will bear, knowing that we're gonna get offers, um, which happens all the time. Mm-hmm. And so people have trade-ins, they have offers. We need to have enough room in that number away from that 100,000 to run it through the shop, to take a trade-in, to over allow on a trade-in when somebody's uh, owes too much on it, that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. um, coming to that figure is the, the most important part of the consignment before we ever even get it in the door, is is getting that figure, figuring out, okay, what, what do you need to get out of it? Do you owe a balance? If you owe 120,000, we need you to pay that balance down to 100,000 if that's all we're, we're able to net you mm-hmm. on that product. So that is a really, really important piece of it. Um, we have in the past done the percentage deal where we, we will take, we'll sell it and take 10% or whatever the cut may be. Um, and that's that is one way of doing it that that a lot of dealers tend to do. But the, uh, we like the net figure because it keeps the the consigner in a little more control. You know, they, well, they yeah. know from the beginning what they're getting into. It's not an arbitrary number that we just made up. It's it's you know exactly what you're getting into the second it rolls on the lot. Right. So the, what what a what a percentage does is anyone can just lower the price. Like yep. If you are not a very talented sales individual. Uh, you probably can just lower the price on something and try to get at a sale. What, yep. what more experienced salespeople do is we build the value in the unit in your coach and we show what the market value is, where other units comparable in age and condition or pr- are priced at. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, present, present it that way, show what we do in the shop and how we prep the unit and all that. Uh, so with a, with a percentage, let's take that 100,000 uh, so a dealership would get, let's say, ten thousand on that ten percent deal mm-hmm. on the hundred thousand. If we sell it for a hundred thousand, yep. Well, then they could just sell it for fifty thousand and still make five. Yep. You know what I mean. And the sales guy could could easily okay. Well, you know, instead of selling it for a hundred, I'll sell it for eighty. Yeah. And then you're 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 the one stuck as the consigner. Right. At at their mercy. The dealership made yeah. made two grand less. You made twenty thousand less. You know what I mean? Exactly. So exactly. A net holds it a little bit stronger forces the dealership to build value into that unit correct and go from there exactly we, f- we feel that's the best way to do it but yeah you know it's it's case by case it's it not is. always the not always the situation that people want to do but that's that's the main way we do it and we always what, what i like too is we have we have a we, we've come to a really good place in our consignments where we've kind of got that system dialed in mm-hmm. to where we know we kind of know exactly not exactly, but we have a really good idea of what things are going to sell for. Um, yeah. And we, we've we've done enough business where we have, we're pretty spot on with our numbers usually. Um, it's pretty rare that we'll bring something in for a price that we can't get somebody. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's uh, and, and we always offer, we, we, we give the consigner offers as well. You yeah. know, it's, it's That's one thing. That's a great thing, point, Eric. One thing about it is, you know, and I've had this happen in the past where, you know, if, if we've agreed upon 100000 but I have a guy standing there with cash ready to buy the motorhome, but we can only net the consigner on the sale because they've their their offer is low we can only net them 90 or 95 the, it's the consigner can still say yes or no to that right and so you can say no and that's fine we'll move on and find another buyer i mean it's it's not you know it's a decision that's made through everybody and not not just through the dealership too we don't have complete control to just be like nope we're gonna lower your consignment price we it's it's a discussion we figure out okay is it worth taking this offer mm-hmm. and if the coach has been here six months and hasn't had any any movement on it then maybe it is time to consider a lower price you know but 
yeah, the nice thing is it's always it's always in their control. And I, I've had customers too that have have known that and have had a bad experience in the past mm-hmm. where where they've tried to consign their coach and then you know you get going and, and the uh, and the dealership just just constantly calling them, undercutting them, trying to get you know trying to use it for profit as mm-hmm. opposed to trying to use it to help use an offer to help sell the coach, help the new customer be happy, sell it for the consigner. And we would never go to that. We would never call the consigner with a lower offer unless we've done, we've exhausted all of our options. We've lowered our profit to the point where we can't anymore, that kind of a thing. So, but it, it's still, it's all about control. The consigner still has control of their motor home that's being sold. You mm-hmm. know, they're kept in the loop the whole time. Right. But uh, yeah, right. At the end of the day, it's your RV. We're just representing it for you, which is yep. also yep. why we can get you a little bit more for it. Think exactly. About this. Like Eric said, let's say it takes six months to sell your unit. Okay. The reason why a dealership's willing to give you more on a consignment than a trade in value is because you, essentially float the risk of it from the standpoint let me put it like this if we buy your unit for a certain amount we have to anticipate selling that in a timely manner our Mm -hmm. goal it's not this is not a museum we move units and that's how you generate income for a store so if it takes six months well that that unit goes through six different book changes so if we buy it here and retail the units here every month the value of that unit goes down you know so as a dealership, we have to kind of hedge our bets when we're bringing things in on trade. But if it's in on consignment, we can ask more because it doesn't cost us anything out of pocket while it's sitting on the lot, essentially. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep, so, exactly. Something to, something to consider there. Totally. Well, that, you know, as a dealership, we look at it as an investment, right? You know, yeah. how much how much can we, can we, like you said, risk for the, the potential of how much reward? But yeah, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's a good, good, alternative to a trade-in mm-hmm. where you can capture more and put more in your pocket for the same product, which is really cool. So, um, well, another thing I want to talk about here with consignments, yes. that's, that's big. You, you touched on it kind of in the introduction there, but it is not being an RV salesman. You know what I mean? From, the, from the standpoint, you, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it is very time consuming. That's why it's a full-time job for us. Most of you who, are, well, you're either working and you don't have the time to have a part-time job trying to sell your RV, or you're busy. A lot of people in retirement, it seems like they're busier in retirement than when they were working because you're volunteering, <laughs> yeah. you're doing stuff with the family, the going on trips, you got all this stuff going on. So to service those phone calls, to service, you know, like questions and getting photos and getting, you know, information sent to customers, very time consuming. So mm-hmm. if you don't want to do that at consignment, you know, it's a great option. Well, I've had I've had a good example of this um, customer of mine. I won't use his name, uh, but he he tried to sell his RV and then ended up consigning it with us rather mm-hmm. than trading it in. Sure. Exactly what we're talking about. And um, during the sale process, he's a busy guy. Like he he runs he runs he has over over two hundred uh, employees underneath him that he's in in charge of. So he's he's like he's got a lot on his plate as wow. it is. So he kept having people call him, and he had a big Integra coach. So this is you know a high dollar item. You keep having people call them. You think you're going to get qualified buyers when you try to sell something on online. What I when I do it on Craigslist or whatever, you know, I, I expect okay, people are going to contact me if they're qualified and ready to buy something. It doesn't happen. So what he what ended up happening with him is this guy made made an appointment on a Saturday. So he's he's also a pilot and he mm-hmm. canceled the flight and all this stuff because he's he's like okay, well I got to be here to show the coach. Guy no showed him, and oh, so oh, so he's he's changing all of his plans of the little time that he has, and it's it was it was super frustrating. It happened to him like three different times on different occasions of you know the same thing happening where people would would not show up or they would show up and then offer an absolutely overwhelmingly ridiculous price sure and so he would waste all of his time and and then for for absolutely nothing so finally he he realized kind of what we're talking about where the the time the effort you have to put in on time is it was just not not worth the payout so for a little bit less we did all the legwork we got the coach sold for him relatively quickly i think Mm -hmm. it was like a month or two i mean it was not it didn't stay that long so um yeah that was a that was a very very good tangible example of that happening and and he gets it you know and and we we had we had to talk about it he's like he's like man this i see why this is a full-time job because it's you know getting all of that to one to to the final sale is a lot of work but anyway it makes sense and advertisement wise think about it i mean we have an absolute marketing machine at our store yes four employees in the marketing department five who's the fifth matt matt's the fifth well cat was the fifth hire jared we got katie these three are here katie matt matt jared katie cody 
Oh, son of a gun, Cody. Look at you. And Katie, too. Hey, buddy. I didn't forget about you. I It's early, and I can't drink my coffee into the microphone. So. Sorry about that. We all struggled through that one that's, with you. That's embarrassing. Wow. We could, we could cut that one out, Jared. Okay. Oh, he's going to leave it. No, Sounds it's good. in there. Cody, love you, buddy. Wow. That's embarrassing. <laughs> So anyway, we have a lot of people in our marketing department, almost as much as sales. And these it guys exactly advertise much. in the United States of America, in Canada, uh, not much overseas, kind of domestically here. That's the hot stuff. We haven't had a lot of sales overseas yet. No. We're really trying to build it's that It's really business. hard to move, like take an RV and ship it across an ocean. Yeah. I'm told. I haven't tried it, but. I'd imagine it'd be difficult. Yeah. So being able to advertise that wide is great now a lot of people if you go on craigslist you can put in your local market maybe a couple other cities that are surrounding you and see what you get but you know there's there's some weird people on the internet oh and on craigslist have you ever sold something on craigslist lately and you get like all the text messages of yes hey i've got a cashier's check just put it in the mail yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> put it in the I'm mail i'm putting the cashier's check in the mail i should have sold five wheels and tires put today. ten thousand dollars in my account and then i'll put put 10,100 in your account. I'm like, this doesn't, doesn't make sense. Does Craig know about this? <laughs> this list is messed up, This man. is not working. So that's why we're here for you because yes. it's going to be on our website. Uh, Cody. RV Trader. <laughs> he's going to take really good photos of it. <laughs> yes. Yes, he Inside is. and out. Yes. It's going to look really good. It is. A lot better than you on your cell phone. No offense. <laughs> Those... The way the coach is going to look better than you? That's going to ruin No, no, no. The coaches are going to look better <laughs> with, with our code. cameras than ah, with your your cell phone you just insulted an entire no, no, no. swath of people no rude no it will look better than you as well <laughs> um after we've marketed it and sold it this is a very important part we go through the coach and we identify any issues that may be on the coach and uh this is one of my favorite things one of the one, one of the biggest myths in the rv world mm -hmm. my coach is perfect <gasps> listen if you're listening to this podcast i have to be brutally honest with you no it isn't your grandchildren Ever. are not perfect either. it is not perfect i love you i love your motorhome it is not perfect no. there are problems with it i've fixed all the problems no you haven't i promise it's kind of like if you walk into a doctor's office and you say hey doc what's wrong with me he has no idea until he takes a blood test and you know figures out you know, a, a lot more in depth in depth you know what's going on right you can't just look at something and be like ah it's perfect blood pressure <laughs> temperature yeah it's perfect everything works well except the fridge we, we never use the fridge well then there you go problem solved so anyway we go through this thing tip to tail and we do a deep 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 dive on the motorhome to figure out not only is everything functioning is going to continue to function to the the level of which it should be so when we go through a coach on a, as, on a consignment trade in anything we go through it within our shop and we, we, we determine what needs to be fixed. And then we have that conversation with the consigner too, because, you know, obviously it's not our inventory. It's not our responsibility to spend $10,000 to fix a motorhome that we don't own, but we have a discussion about, okay, you know, right. obviously these things, these light bulbs, of course, we're going to, we're not going to charge you for light. We'll put the light bulbs in, not a big deal. But you know, when we have an issue like a fridge, you know, that's a discussion that we have. And, or and batteries uh, are shot or, or, yeah. or tires are, are outdated. Yep. Cause at the end of the day, it falls back on, on us when we sell the coach we're representing someone else's coach on a consignment so right. it, this is this is a very important piece because it's something that we always talk about when we bring in a consignment is is you know what what are the known things that are wrong with it um windshields cracked i have a customer that brought their consignment over from idaho and they're so awesome they already knew of course the windshield was cracked so before they even got it here they set up with our local glass dealer really they called set up set up the appointment got yeah. everything done and dialed in and says here you go all you need to do is give them the claim That's number great. and and so that kind of thing helps us a ton and mm -hmm. knowing ahead of time that if we find stuff we're going to have to have it fixed one way or another right. um which it, is why if you it, have but, an extended service policy we get yes. that up front we can get Huge. it in the shop and anything that can be covered under extended service policy that way it yeah. costs you less yeah. and us less to get the unit prepped totally it's better and so, all, all, all this to say, we actually cover the prep portion, or not the, sorry, not the prep portion, the, uh, um, the so we PDI don't portion. Cover the prep portion. No, we we cover the, we cover the. Don't the, lie to America. The, <laughs> He just insulted America. Wow. So the 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 actual PDI portion, which is twelve hours of a technician's time, which costs us eighteen hundred or so on average. And what is a PDI, Eric? Pre-delivery inspection. That's where we find out all of the things that you had no idea was wrong with your motorhome. Perfect. And uh, we we that's the deep dive. Deep so anyway, dive. that we we spend on average, let's say eighteen hundred 
per unit that that goes out just just sure. to in the finding process. This right. isn't even we haven't even turned a wrench yet. This is literally just figuring out what's wrong with it. So, so we go through plumbing, electric yeah. slide outs, generators. We drive it. The awnings, the mm -hmm. uh, appliances on the inside. We go through the whole thing tip to tail. Yep. And safety, livability, functionality. That's right. And, and the most important thing to take from this is that it's the nice thing is you don't, you're not responsible. If you sell a private party and somebody calls you and they have issues with it, um, you're not going to be backtracking, trying to figure out how to how to solve the problem, all these different things that, that may come up. We're it, the buffer between you and the customer. Exactly. When they have an issue, you know, which, which RVs do have issues, believe it or not, uh, when they go down the road in, in your coach, you're not getting that phone call. Like we kind of touched on briefly, like, you know, how many times have we had to run out to a coach to, to do a little fix it because something, you know, didn't function quite right. I mean, mm -hmm. we take on that burden, which is uh, another thing that can be extremely time consuming trying to sell it on your own. Um, so that's kind of nice. It, it helps, it helps uh, mm -hmm. as a consigner, you know, that you're not taking on that, that burden. We'll go through the coach. We'll do, we'll do the pre, pre delivery inspection for the new owner, make sure that they're getting a, a De quality working it. rig. Detail it. Set Talk up, about detailing. Set up five minutes for it. Yeah. All that stuff. No, it's yeah. good. Yeah, Down the buffer future. between you and the customer is uh, is a big deal. Like I said, there are some weird people out there. But keep this in mind. If you were thinking about selling to your friend, if your coach has never had any issues with it ever, a guaranteed way for your motorhome to start like acting up and causing issues and stuff is sell it to one of your best friends. Because <laughs> what will happen is then you'll get a co phone call, gosh, this is broken or this isn't working or I don't understand oh, no. this. A lot of user error stuff or the, you know, your neighbor, sell it to your neighbor and they will be knocking on your door nonstop because it's just, it's like Murphy's law. Yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, I've never had issues with this thing. And I sell it to this guy and he's had yeah. nothing but issues. And now I get to see him at, at uh, Bible study on, on Wednesday mornings. <laughs> And you're like, why did I ever sell this guy anything? This thing, uh, this unit was perfect when he bought it. Then six months later, started you know issues started acting up. Uh, so keep that in mind. Sometimes it's better just let a dealership sell it for you, and then there's a buffer between you and the new customer. Totally, totally, absolutely. And then um, after that is, we've sold the coach, we've taken this consignment. Now you get your new coach from us. Yeah, ma <laughs> new stuff's fun. New stuff. Buy a new one from us. Yeah. Now you don't have an RV anymore. We just sold it for you. What are you going to do? Buy another one. Buy a new Obviously. one. Obviously. From us. <laughs> um, so I think uh, uh, one thing we should talk about is why consign. Okay. So over, so you, you, we, we've talked a little bit about the, how the process works, oh. but why would you do that over trading? And you touched on it. Um, if you're, if you have a coach on order is a good example. Yeah. That's the, like the biggest one for me that, yeah. that pops up all my consignments yeah. I did last year <clears throat> mm -hmm. because we were low on new inventory sitting on the lot. We did a lot of factory orders as yep. you remember. Yep. And it just takes, you know, three, four months for a factory order to get mm -hmm. processed and built and out here. So in the meantime, it gives you time to sell your RV when the value is the highest on it. Because ultimately, your current RV is worth the most today. Yeah. You know, it's worth less tomorrow. And when I say that, I don't mean worth less. It's just worth less. Commas are very important in that sentence. <laughs> there's, there's no commas. There's no commas in, in between that. that no. No, RV sales. Thank you. So yeah. what do you expect? But run it through Grammarly. <laughs> <laughs> like everything else. <laughs> but yeah, you want to sell your RV when it has the most amount of value. Mm -hmm. Which is right now. Exactly. Yeah. A trade in a trade in three, four, five months in, in this in this world um, is worth less down yeah. the road. So, and so no. keep in mind, like right now is a hot time. If you are if you have an RV and you're looking at selling it, mm -hmm. RV price like the the amount of demand has never been high, mm -hmm. and the amount of inventory out there has never been this low for new and used. So it's a great time because there's people looking for RVs, and there's a good chance that we can get that second dog sold for you quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, another good reason to consign is let's say you have a family member's coach and and they've passed away, or if you have a, an extenuating circumstance where they you you have now inherited this motorhome that you need to get rid of. Sure. Or or I mean, it could be anything. That's just one of the one example. But um, uh, any reason that you know you have a full time job and you're trying to also sell, we've talked about how difficult it could be. Any time that that situation happens, which we've had several times, uh, or similar, uh, it, it's a good it's a good way to not have to do all the work yeah. and to let us do the work. You collect the check, and that's that's it. You're, you know, you you just know you have peace of mind that it's getting taken care of. One less thing you have to worry about. It's not on your plate to mm -hmm. take all those calls and try to get somebody financed and take their trade in and yeah, all the other that things. Yeah, that makes sense. 
I think last thing on a consignment piece, you got to be careful about dealership. Make sure you're dealing with one with a great reputation. Yeah, true. Because there is something in the industry, you probably heard the, the phrase lot rot. Lot mm-hmm. rot is just when an RV is sitting, it's the worst thing you can ever do for an RV. They're made to be used. And when you're using them, if stuff pops up, you get it fixed right away. A coach that sits at an RV lot for an extended period of time, you could have battery issues. You can have whatever, just lot rot. Mm-hmm. Uh, for us, we go through all of our inventory. We fire up the generators Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays to make sure that they're extra, extra, uh, extra. We do exorcisms on our all of our <laughs> exercised, <laughs> exercised. Yeah, eggs are side for bacon. Uh, yeah, so we do it's that. Too early in the we morning. We <laughs> make sure batteries are juiced up, good to go. Yeah. The the batteries are killed at night time. You know all that mm-hmm. stuff. Here's how I view our inventory. Okay, <laughs> we want to take care of our inventory because the nicer and better condition it is, the more higher premium it goes for. It's like real estate. Some would call it real estate. Mm-hmm. I would, personally. It's more like cows. Uh, okay, well, either way, as a real estate agent would know, if you stage a house, if you oh, make yeah. a house, you know, take pictures in the right lighting, that sort of thing. I mean, it, we stage these professionally. This is nice stuff here, okay? <laughs> you don't get that. You don't get that everywhere. <laughs> you don't get that everywhere, buddy. No. Oh man, no, no. So anyway, yeah, it's, uh, we 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 do we go over and above a little yeah. bit extra to make but sure that your coach just is just a little extra. Uh, I think that's that we're hitting all the big stuff here. I, 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 think, I think so. I think we kind of covered it. I, th- I guess the only part, other part, is most people at, at this. If you have a, a luxury class A diesel, most people have a trade mm-hmm. at this point. They're not jumping to their first coach. And it's really hard to when someone has a trade to. You can't, it's not, you're trying to sell your RV. You're not trying to buy something that's less expensive or smaller. You're selling yours. So you can't facilitate bringing in a, a trade. A dealership can do that. Right. So. so a trade-in is anything that has a value, basically. So we can take, we can take anything that we can put a value on, whether it be a car, motorcycle, RV, obviously. Um, it basically, I mean, we've taken all kinds of different stuff on trade before. Land. Land. Silver. A horse. A horse. Trailer. Well, oh, one time we took a plane in. We did. Remember that? I forgot about that. Yeah, That's the we best one. We called it the Beaver. In and plane. Yeah. We called it our corporate jet. <laughs> the corporate like jet. A 1970. <laughs> it's like a 52 Cessna. You know, thing's awesome. Takes like four gallons of fuel. <laughs> One seater. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, but it was a tiny little Cessna. It was awesome. Trade. If you got yeah. something laying around that you don't owe anything on that has a value. Yep. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. use that as a down payment too. Yeah. Is you know, so if you're financing and you have something lawnmower, let's say you don't have ten grand cash, but you have something worth ten thousand dollars. Boom. There's your down payment. Like fourteen lawnmowers. Those are expensive lawnmowers. Good for you. Anyway, that's a trade-in. So. Yeah. It's a good explanation. Yeah. Eric, why don't you give us the top five reasons why you should consign your RV? Okay. We'll wrap it up with that. All right. Number one, nationwide coverage. Um, Our marketing team does an incredible job of sending the product out to the entire nation as well as our neighbors to the north, Canada. Mm. Uh, We do about 60% of our business out of state entirely. So we have all kinds of leads coming in from all over the the nation. Um, Number two, transparent pricing and secured facility. As we talked about at the beginning, we go into our consignments knowing exactly what you're going to get out of it. And so it's a very, very upfront uh, situation and we take good care of your product while it is here which brings me to number three professionally detailed decored and photographed so you don't have to do all the hard work to make this thing look beautiful we're going to do it for you number four uploaded and optimized for five different websites so we do the hard work also of making sure that when it is marketed it's marketed correctly and in the proper format mm-hmm. um, which is a lot of work in itself all five corners of the internet oh, <laughs> with all of our five marketeers mm-hmm Knights of the round table. That'll catch on. Number five, buyer trade-ins and financing welcome. So we actually do take a trade-in and a, cons- and a, a, a financing on consignments, which oddly enough, other dealers don't do all the time. No, I think it's so, just, let's say you bring in a trade for 250000 They have to write a check that day for 250000 That's fair. We can do that. We can do that. Yep. So anyway, we, we treat we it as though it's our own inventory. $251,000 in the bank right now. Fortunately. So anything more than that, get out of here. Um, and that's it. That's number, that's number that's five. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, top, hopefully top this has been helpful for you and you've learned a lot about consignments today. If you would like to consign your RV, how can people get a hold of us, Eric? You can reach us at our website, www.beavercoachsales.com, or you can give us a call at 541-322-2184, and we would be happy to help. That's right. Well, if you have any more questions, please contact us. 
And I think we have a sales meeting come, uh, coming up, don't 15 we? minutes. 15 yeah. minutes. Let's wrap this thing up. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm Ryan Kelly. I'm Eric Shaver. And we look forward to seeing you down, down the, the road. road. We'll work on that. I thought we nailed it. We can edit that. That's pretty post. good. Are you pointing or thumbs up? Oh, we'll work on it. Let's get out of here. Okay. <laughs>